This is Beer in Front, part of the Odd Pods Media Network. Sometimes the beer in front of you is the best one yet. I'll talk about some great beer, and I'll also talk to various people in and around the beer industry to get their stories all about beer. That's Beer in Front, and it's coming up now. Welcome to the special 4th Anniversary, Episode 199 of Beer in Front. I'm your host, Dave Zalato. I say that shit every week, but I'm the only one doing this show. So, I don't know, but I'm your host, Dave Zalatoris, and Beer in Front is a proud Hot Pods Media Network member. Later on in the show, I'll have the annual Samuel Adams Boston Lager, the first craft beer I ever had, and the first one I talked about four years ago. I'll also sample some from breweries in Illinois that I don't always talk about. And it's not that I don't want to, it's just there are so many great breweries in the state that it's hard to get to them all. I plan to change that this year. I want to have a beer from a brewery in Chicago or Illinois for each episode. I'm putting together a spreadsheet so... I'll know which ones I still need to get to. Four years ago, for whatever reason, I decided to start a podcast. Up till then, I never listened to them. Ruby does, and she tried to get me to listen to them. I'm like, nah, I don't want to listen to podcasts. But then I had a bug up my ass. Oh, maybe I should have a podcast and talk about beer. Now, this was a couple weeks before the pandemic hit. So you can't say I did this instead of making a sourdough starter like many did in 2020. But it's funny, many podcasts started around that time, and I noticed that a lot have quit since then. And to be honest, I'm frankly surprised I've lasted this long. Sometimes the weekly grind gets a little overwhelming, but this is almost like therapy to me. I've shared things here and stories that I've only told a couple people. Now, don't be a jag off and send me a bill for listening. I'm going to talk about some beers in a bit, but I wanted to give you some show and personal updates. I'm making some more hop water, and it won't explode the soda stream bottle this time. Longtime friend of the show, Dan, suggested making like a hop extract and adding that to the carbonated water. Now, as I'm recording this, I'm making this extract right now. I bought some hops from Billy Goat Hop Farm, and I'm soaking them in vodka, and then I'm going to strain it out. And thanks, Mom, for the vodka. I'll use drops in their already carbonated water, like I've done with other products. So we'll see how this goes, and I'll have videos up on that. Now, because this is soaking in vodka... There's going to be a little alcohol in it, but considering it's only a drop, couple drops in a 12 or 16 ounce glass of water, it's going to be minuscule. So keep an eye out for that. I'll post videos on how that hop water comes out. Also, later on, I'm going to chat with the folks at Billy Goat Hop Farm probably later on in the month, and we're going to talk about the hop industry. So keep an ear out for that. Pinter makes a home brewing apparatus. Now, I'm going to receive one from them to make beer in. Looks pretty cool, almost like a, I don't know, like a Keurig, if you will, for making beer. It's like an all-in-one apparatus. So they're sending me one later on this week. I'm going to brew the beer and share the beer with some friends of mine at the end of the month, and I'll have updates on the podcast, and I'm sure I'll be posting videos on how the process is, and to get people's reactions to the beer, because, I mean, the beer has to be good, or else why would you buy it? But keep an eye out for that from Pinter. My back is still messed up. Now, the doctor doesn't feel that surgery is needed, but now I'm pushing six months of this, and I'm at the end of my rope. He is now going to give me an injection into the affected discs to see if that helps. Now, Get this, instead of just sticking the needle in my back, he's got to go through my ass cheek. 
he's explaining this, and while I pulling his fingers apart to tell me it's a big needle. Dude, all you got to do is tell me, are you putting me under for this? That's all I need to know. If you're putting me under, don't tell me how big the needle is because I don't want to know. But it's a big needle. It's going through my ass cheek and they're going to put me under. So I'll see if maybe Ruby can live stream this. In beer and beverage news, the Teamsters and AB InBev have a tentative agreement ending the strike. Now, this contract's going to be for all 5,000 Teamster members working for AB InBev. Snoop and Dre have come out with gin and juice. I'm actually having one of these right now as we speak. This is a ready-to-drink cocktail, and it has gin, juice, honey, and other flavorings. I picked up an eight-pack variety the other day. I had the apricot that was good. I'm drinking the citrus right now, and it's really good. I put a video up on social media of the apricot, but this is really good. So if you're looking for something a little different, check out Gin and Juice. Legendary frontman Roger Daltrey of The Who turned 80 last week in Lake Down Brewing in East Sussex. They put out Roger's Pale Ale. Now, Roger and his son own the brewery, and the beer is not for sale. It's just for Roger. So I guess if you're Roger Daltrey, you could have your own beer, but happy 80th to Roger Daltrey. Goose Island is bringing back Honker's Ale in cans. This was the beer that started it all for Goose. This is going to be a 4.3% beer, going to be brewed here in Chicago. The release date is unknown, but Honkers was always a great choice. I'll be picking this up again when it comes out in cans. I remember when they still had the Clybourne location before they moved to the salt shed, they still brewed it there and you could pick up a growler, or I'm sorry, like a crowler or growler of it. And it was always a good beer. So I'm looking forward to having Honkers again. Goose is also teaming up with the New York Yankees. It's going to be called Legendary Ale. And it's going to be in these 25-ounce cans. So I'm assuming this is just going to be sold at Yankee games. But I don't want to know what a 25-ounce beer is going to cost you at a Yankee game. On March 15th, Cruz Blanca and Hot Butcher, they're teaming up for Royal Palm. This is a variation of Cruz Blanca's terrific Palm Shade. So look for that on the 15th. Hey, this is Grab and Brisket Podcast. Join us every Monday where we talk about the latest trends in barbecue, interviews with world top pit masters, celebrity cooks. Ooh, like uh, Wee Man from Jackass. And musicians. Like Rich O'Toole. So check us out. We do beer reviews, barbecue fails. So many fires. Dude, a lot of people just burn their houses down for no reason. We also talk about cocaine hippos versus meth gators. Learn how to make some tailgate gravy. Altercations with Texas Rangers. People throwing Reese's peanut butter cups. Yeah. So check out grabthebrisket.com for podcast info, viral social media posts, and so much more. All right. So it's the fourth anniversary, 199th episode. I have to have the beer that started it all off. Samuel Adams Boston Lager. I think it's my annual Samuel Adams on the show. If you listened to the show before, this was the first craft beer I ever had back in 1989. Still, like you go to an airport, there's nothing better than a Boston Lager that's on tap. You don't find it everywhere else. It's usually like airport bars or like Chili's or Bennigan's if they were still around. But a Sam Adams on tap is still a great beer. They rechanged the recipe last year to a more cleaner formula. And I had it last year and it wasn't that fond of it. But let's try this one again. The Boston Lager looks great. Nice color here. Good foam. It does smell good. I'll give it that. Now, the date on this says best by June, so I'm assuming this is fairly fresh and not last year's. That's still a good beer, but, and it just could be me in my mind playing tricks on me. I do think that I liked the older one better that wasn't as crisp and clean, but 
since I haven't had that in a couple of years, you know, who's to say that's true or not. But I think the other one had a little bit more character to it, if that makes any sense. I mean, this is still solid. Yeah, I mean, it's still, Boston Lager is still, you know, a really good beer. I'll never say no to a Boston Lager. But since we don't have any, like, chilies or anything like that in Chicago, I'm going to have to, like, go to Rosemont and find a Chili's or one of those type of restaurants where I could have a Sam Adams on tap again. But if you see it, put it in the cart. I mean, you don't find Boston Lager as much. It seems like they're pushing more of the variety packs and things of that nature. But I did have to dig deep for this one, but I'm glad I found it. It's still a great beer. So Sam Adams, thanks for starting me on this craft beer journey. And if you see the Boston Lager, you still got to put it in the cart. All right, next up is Energy City Brewing. Now, they contract brew in Itasca, and they're known for their fruited beers. I'm not sure I've ever talked about them on the show, so I wanted to include them. Now, this is a Berliner that's called Bistro Banana Split. It's got a lot going on here. I'm going to have to read it. Six and a half percent. This is, they have bananas, pineapples, strawberries, chocolate, cherries, and natural flavors. So, I don't know. It doesn't say lactose, so that's good. So, let's crack open the Bistro Banana Split from Energy City. It's really hazy, nice foam, and aroma. it, It does smell like a banana split. There's so much going on here with the aroma. I get chocolate up front, but I get everything that I read off. It's right there, but chocolate is the first thing that hits my nose with the aroma. Wow. Yeah, that's that's a banana split. I get banana tastes. I get I get everything here. It's pretty good. Really sweet tasting. I don't know, to be honest with you that I could drink more than like one of these in a sitting because it's, it's a lot, but it's good. I mean, I definitely get everything here. Let me have some more of this. I definitely, the chocolate and the cherries hit me right up front with the flavor, but I do get like the pineapple, the banana, the, I get everything here. So it's good. So they do make a lot of, of like fruited sours, Berliners. So if you see something from Energy City, you got to put it in the cart. Get yourself a banana split. All right. One of the ones I want to talk about is from Plainfield, Illinois, Workforce Brewing Company. This is their ultra premium, super galactic India pale ale. 7.2% alcohol. They use pale malt, Red X, Munich, and Red Caramel malt with Citra, Galaxy, Cascade, Mosaic, Centennial, and Columbus hops. They use Chico Ale yeast. So I'm guessing this is going to be West Coast, but let's crack open the Ultra Premium Super Galactic. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful color. Nice foam here. Good three fingers of khaki pants looking foam looks really good smells great it just smells like this huge big west coast ipa huge flavors out of the aroma that's outstanding really good big flavor of the malt and the hops little bitterness at the back which i like this is fantastic it's one of the best ipas i've had in a long time I don't think I've had much from Workforce. I know I haven't talked about them on the show, so when I was doing this, I wanted to grab some beers from places I haven't really talked about in Illinois. But I'm going to be grabbing more from Workforce, that's for sure. It's W-E-R-K Force. They're in Plainfield, Illinois. And if you see the Ultra Premium Super Galactic, you got to throw this one in the cart. Get a four-pack. Don't just mix and match. 
get a four pack and throw this one in a cart. The next local beer I'm going to have is from Horse Thief Hollow. They have, looks like on the can, two locations, one in the city and one in Beverly. This is Annexation. This is a West Coast IPA. They use on this Centennial, Cascade, and Simcoe hops. Big fan of West Coast IPA, so I'm looking forward to this. I don't think I've had anything from Horse Thief Hollow yet on the show, so I'm correcting that now. Beautiful artwork on the can. I love the artwork here. I'm a big fan of West Coast IPA, so this should be good. Let's crack this one open. Oh, annexation looks great. Nice, good color here. Good foam. Oh, yeah. That's just smells like a good West Coast IPA. You really get those citrusy, piney notes in the aroma. It smells great. Oh, yeah. That's really good. Trying to see on the can if it has an ABV listed, but it's delicious. This is really good. It's one of the best West Coast beers I've had in a while. I like this. I'm going to have to try to pick up some more stuff from Horse Thief Hollow. Yeah, that's really good. If you're a fan of old school West Coast IPAs and you're in the Chicago area, definitely pick up Annexation. This is a West Coast, once again, from Horse Thief Hollow. I highly recommend this one. Put this one in the cart. All right, and finally, on my beers from Illinois to have, I'm going to have from Haymarket. This is called The Defender. I'm assuming this is named after the legendary black newspaper, The Defender. This is an American-style stout, 7% alcohol, I'm a big fan of Haymarket, so let's crack this one open. Really nice foam here. Good three fingers of foam. Smells good. I get that nice roasty smell to the aroma. I like it. No, that's good. That's really good. Get all those nice roasty notes with the flavor here. I think this is really good. Now, in fairness, like... Haymarket, this is brewed in Michigan, but their bar is in Chicago. So I don't know if this is an Illinois beer, but I'm going to count it. But let's get back to the beer itself. This Defender is excellent. Yeah, definitely put this one in the cart. I don't know if this is going to be like a year-round release, but I think this is really good. Nice price point here. It's not going to break the bank like some of your barrel-aged stouts are. Haymarket does have a good barrel age program. I think they had, and I forget the name of it now, but this raspberry one they put out a couple years ago, that was good. So Haymarket does do a great stout. If you see the Defender, put it in the cart. All right, that's going to wrap things up for this fourth anniversary episode 199 of beer in front i thank you very much for listening whether it's your first time listening or you've listened to 198 other shows i thank you very much it means a lot if you want to get a hold of me you could email me dave at beerinfront.com or you could find me on all the social media channels at beer in front have a great week i'll talk to you next week on beer in front and remember Sometimes the beer in front of you is the best one yet.